What's poppin' dogs? It's Mr. Allen Matham with a couple circles in this video. And we got a lot going on, so let's get to it. The radius of circle A is five inches. It's a small guy. The radius of circle B, this one over here, is 12 inches. The centers of these two circles are 25 inches apart, and we want to find the length of the common external tangent of the two circles. Well, all we have drawn are the two circles. There's no common external tangent. I have nothing connecting the center, so we are gonna have to draw some things in here. But what's a common external tangent? There's actually two ways you can draw this one. I could draw it up here, tangent to both circles, connect that line, I want that length, or you could draw it down here. And I'm actually gonna favor the one on the bottom, but you can do whatever you'd like, all right? So I'm just gonna get my straight edge here and I'm gonna connect the two circles at the bottom. This is a common external tangent. It's tangent to both circle A and circle B. So I'm gonna make this point right here and I'll make another point right over here. Okay, so that's the length that I want right there. I'll call it uh, C and point D so that way we can call them out in the video if needed, all right? Now, I know the radius of this circle is five inches and this one's 12, but there's an infinite number of ways that I can draw in radius. So maybe I'll hold off on that for a sec. Let's connect these two centers here because I know that length is 25, right? 25 inches, Q, boom, all right. So this is 25 inches. All right, now what? Well, if I were to connect my radii to some existing points, that might make some sense, right? Otherwise, I'm just going off in infinite different locations. I have no idea what I'm doing, right? But I'm gonna draw this one straight down to C. Well, it's kind of crooked based on this drawing, but that's okay. And I'm gonna go right down to this guy here from B to D. Now, what do you know about a radius drawn to the point of tangency on a circle? Well, what I know, because you might not know, and that's why we're watching the video, is that it's going to be perpendicular. The radius is perpendicular at the point of tangency. That is super awesome. And I know that this is 5 inches here, and this is 12 inches over here. And I got this trapezoid-looking thing going on here. But I don't have a formula to find a missing length of a trapezoid. I mean, if I knew the area, I could solve for that, but I, I don't, right? So maybe there's another way. In math. Geometry specifically, we like to throw in right triangles when possible, okay? Right triangles help us solve for missing lengths, missing angles, other dimensions of different figures, whether it's three-dimensional or two-dimensional. So if we can get a right triangle in here, we can Pythag with that. Now check this out. If I were to draw a line parallel to CD, okay? I'm gonna go with parallel to CD best I can, all right? So this guy here, and I'm going to dash this one in, I guess. I think that would look nice. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, now that line is parallel to this guy down here. That's a mark for parallel. You can do one arrow, two arrows. I decided to do two for whatever reason. But these two are parallel. So if these two are parallel, then the corresponding angles, these two right here, are congruent. That'll be a right angle as well. So I'm bringing in, bringing in some other stuff here. But I've now created this right triangle a parallelogram, or actually a rectangle, because there are four right angles there, and I can math with that. Well, the opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. So wouldn't that make this guy right here five inches? Because this guy's five inches. And if this is five inches and the whole thing is 12, 12 minus five, whoops, 12 minus five is seven. So this would be seven inches right here. All right. Now I have a right triangle with two known sides. And if this is a rectangle, as we've established, and my opposite sides are congruent, if I get this dashed line side, wouldn't that be my common external tangent length? It would. How wonderful is that? Isn't that cool? That's cool. All right, let's finish the problem. I won't leave you hanging, okay? So now I've got seven, I've got 25, I've got Pythag going on. You can do seven squared plus, we'll call it X squared equals 25 squared, but if, you know your Pythagorean triples. You know this bad boy is 24 inches right there. Boom. So my answer is 24 inches for my common external tangent of the circle because this length right here of the dash line is the same as this length right here. Bippity boppity. All right. Now, if you didn't know the 24, um, you could do 49 here plus x squared equals 625. Got to subtract that. I'll get x squared equals... Is that uh, 576 
There we go. Square root, square root. I'm going to get x equals 24. But your Pythagorean triples, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. Those are all good to know, especially in your circles unit. It comes back, all right? A lot of these work out nicely with Pythagorean triples, so it just allows you to move a little faster through it. There you go, guys. Common external tangent. That was a pretty cool problem right there. Right triangles, as always, for the win. Pythag, greatest theorem of all time. Dope mathematician. See you guys later.